Hello, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for taking the time to get on my channel and watch my videos. I really appreciate that. If you're new on here, welcome on board. If you're just seeing my channel for the first time and you'd like to subscribe, don't hesitate to click that button and the notification bell so you know when I post a new video. So let's get into today's one. It's a part two of my 10 over 10 Middle Eastern perfumes. And I'll preface this by saying that you, if you're not used to Middle Eastern perfumes, they take a little bit of getting used to. These ones I've had for upwards of a year. So I've really had time to wear them. I've had time for them to macerate. And, you know, I really understand these perfumes now compared to a year ago when I first got them. And I can say, I can beat my chest and say that they are my 10 over 10. So let's get started. We're going to start with one that I don't hear too many people talk about. And this is from our math is magnificent, magnificent porfem. This is a beautiful rose and geranium with patchouli. Those are the stars of this show. It's deep. It's very intriguing. It's dark. It's so sexy. This is night out. I can't even imagine wearing this during the day. This is one I would wear if I were going to a party at night, specifically a club-like setting. Like this reminds me of a club. Yes, it's very boozy. The rose is so deep and dark. There's some berries in here, but it seems like they've been... Mm, you know, dipped in some booze and just, oh, Jesus, this perfume is lovely. I don't know how else to describe it. There's a patchouli in here that is very smooth and rich and velvety. And I mean, this is a 10 of a 10 for me. Longevity wise, in terms of the smell, the fact that it is so unique, because I haven't smelled anything like this before. So to me, this is a fantastic 10 over 10. It's more feminine than masculine, even though I see how some people who like masculine scents might like this because it's really deep and intense. On Fragrantica, you will see that some people say it smells like um, Midnight Rose, Trezor's Midnight Rose. I don't agree with that. I even feel like this perfume should have been called Midnight Rose, if anything, because Trezor's Midnight Rose is a softer, more feminine rose with some berries. That's not what this is. Everything here is deeper and darker and more sensual and intriguing. So, you know, those two, these, th that perfume doesn't smell like this. So please just don't be deceived by what you see on Fragrantica. So that's it for this perfume. It is really, really good. I love it. And it's a 10 over 10 for me. Following that, we have one from Fragrance World called Prohibit Intense. And I feel like when you see this, you already know what it's duping. So this is a dupe for um, Lunge D Intense by Givenchy. That's the Intense Eau de Parfum. This is a beautiful tuber rose with vanilla, some black pepper and sesame. I love how this presents. It's a white floral but with character. It's not your average white floral perfume. And it's so close to the original. That's why I like it. I don't even think I, I will spend money buying the original because this is so close. I don't know how they were able to get it this close. It is so close to the original. The tuberose here is really beautifully done. It's not heady. It just wafts in and out and it's surrounded by that lovely toasted sesame scent that gives this a very comforting smell. I love it. The vanilla adds to the sweetness, you know, that creaminess. There's a refined smooth patchouli in here as well. Everything just works in harmony when it comes to this perfume. And I totally love it. It's a 10 over 10 for me. And it's so accurate in terms of how well it mirrors the original. So for me, this is a 10 over 10. It's another one I don't hear too many people talking about for some reason. I have a detailed review on Solutions underscore ME, my other channel where I talk about more affordable perfumes, especially from Middle Eastern houses. So if you want a detailed review, I can put that a link to that in you know, the comments, but this is really, really good. If you're looking for a classy, elegant white floral, prohibit perfume intensities, 
for me. It's a 10 of a 10. Next up, I have I Am The Queen, and this is by a house called Ard Al Zafaran. This perfume is a dupe for Eber Pura. There's so many Eber Pura dupes in the Middle Eastern fragrance world. I'm not mad at that, but... So on me, Eber Pura, the original, is very intense. It can get a bit screechy, especially when the weather is hot. This is like a toned-down version of the original in the sense that it still maintains that same fruity muskiness with vanilla, but this is more pared down. You know, the dry down is so soft and smoother in my opinion, but I, and I really, really love this. You know, I really, really love this. A very sweet pear and vanilla with musk. This is another one that you should look at the Latafa website for the notes. This one came with the notes in the pack, actually. What you have on the website is totally, or rather what you have on Fragrantica is totally different from the notes in here. This is pear, musk, and vanilla. So just putting that out there in case you're working with the notes on Fragrantica, that's not, that's incorrect. Okay, so I love this. It's musky, I mean, pear and vanilla. What else can you say? I find it to be really sweet and beautiful. It's one of those ones that I wear when I just want to feel very cozy. Okay, next up, we have Nebras by Latafa. This one is a dupe for Eilish by Billie Eilish. I think they smell very much alike. Almost, I'll say 80, 85%, if you ask me. This is a beautiful one. I loved it when I first got it. I love it even more now that it has had time to macerate. This is beautiful. My husband says that this smells like a like you're baking something with vanilla essence and cacao. There was a day I wore this and he asked me if I was baking and he told me that was what he was smelling. He's not somebody who has too many opinions on my perfume. So whenever he says something, you know, I always hold on to that. Yes, this smells like a vanilla based dessert that has some cacao in it. So if you're looking for like that realistic foodie vanilla scent, you're going to get it from here. It has some sugariness in there. There's some tonka to give it some depth. And I love that. It has great longevity. It smells really delicious. Layers very well with so many other perfumes. I love that as well. And I think it's a 10 over 10. Again, all of these are based on my nose. It will depend on what kind of scent profiles you would typically gravitate towards and i also i always say that with middle eastern perfumes whether they they're dupes of an original designer or something you should still uh, bear in mind that they may have some middle eastern nuances like a little bit of oud or lots of woodiness you know they always infuse that or some slight incense i always find that they have touches of those notes and people who are not used to that scent profile get very disappointed when they try Middle Eastern perfumes. So I think you should just bear that in mind whenever you try them. Now this is another one that I find really, really, really beautiful and that is Kima by Latafa. This is supposed to be a dupe for Good Girl by Carolina Herrera. When I first got this perfume, I did not agree that it was a dupe, but now that I've had it for so long, I kind of see where the similarities are. Imagine if Good Girl had an eau de toilette, that's what this would be. This is such a feminine, soft, pretty girl scent. It's so beautiful. I really, really love this. If you're somebody who likes, just really lights sweet feminine perfumes especially white florals this would be for you this is jasmine i think there's orange blossom or tuberose i can't remember what the second white floral is but there's jasmine in here there's vanilla there's some woodiness at the base it's a beautiful perfume i mean i can't say that enough very signature scent worthy it's not heavy this is very unlikely to offend anybody and i just find it to be absolutely stunning for somebody who likes feminine florals especially in the white floral category this is a 10 of a 10. It's called Kima by Latafa. Stays closer to the skin. It's not the longest lasting. You might need to respray, but oh my God, will you smell beautiful? 
Absolutely. So next in line today is, I mean, everybody knows camera. My bottom cap is having some issues, so I'll just drop it on here so it doesn't fall. Camera is beautiful. Again, it's another one I've had for a while, so it's had time to really macerate and come into its own. So I've reviewed it as a dupe for Angel Share, and they do smell alike. But I would say that it smells even more like this perfume from the House of Oud, and it's called Date Delight. Date Delight and Camera smell so much alike. So if you were ever looking for a dupe for this, Camera is your, your, your go-to. It has that cinnamon, vanilla, you know, sweetness from the date. It is a very stunning perfume. I feel like the difference between these two would be that Camera is more intense, is heavier on the cinnamon and those resinous qualities. But other than that, smell very similar, like Christmas to me. So yeah, Camera is really beautiful. I totally, totally love it. And if you were ever looking for a dupe for this from the House of Oud, Camera is your best bet. Very, very good and very long lasting. Very, very long lasting. I mean, Camera could last a whole day on my clothes, depending on how much I spray. Afnant Modest Do Parfum. This is a dupe for La Nuit Trezor. So it's somewhere in between La Nuit Trezor and the Ala Folie version. But again, it this is very polarizing. I think because you know, the indicator that it had berries and cherry and dark chocolate. So a lot of people went into this thinking they would smell something different. I'll just say, if you do not like perfumes along the lines of La Nuit Trezor, then you won't like this because I can't, I don't, I'm not looking at the notes right now, but I think there's some incense in it. So if you're not used to those kinds of deep scents, even though it has vanilla and all these other beautiful notes, you will get something that smells a little incense -y. And if you're not used to that scent profile, you will not like this perfume, okay? So now let's talk about the layering combos. So this is a 10 over 10 for me before I start talking about the layering combos. I find it to be really beautiful. It lasts really long. It is very deep and intense. And it's one of those ones you wear when <laughs> you just want to feel like a rich woman. So yeah, Modest Doe is, is absolutely stunning. And it's a 10 over 10 for me. Good value for money, good projection, good longevity, all of that. Now, in terms of the ones that I would typically pair together i have four of them here so i would typically pair modest dough with camera because they both have lots of gourmand notes you know they so i find that they're complementary in that way this has cherry and dark chocolate and all that this has dates praline some resins vanilla so it pairs so well together it creates something so rich and intense totally love that combination and when i pair them i've tried two options i put the camera on top of modest dough or on one side of my my clothes i spray the camera and on the other side the modest dough so you're getting wafts of both in the air stunning absolutely stunning the next one is nebras and i am the queen oh my god delicious because they both have foodie elements this has pear vanilla this of course has your cacao vanilla berries and all that so it is so stunning it's gourmand heaven it's very delightful i love 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 that combo oh i have it sprayed on paper so beautiful so so beautiful so on this i put i am the queen at the base because i want that musky base and then i add this to i am the queen I put it on top chef's kiss chef's kiss all right next up i have my third combo for the day and that is two white floral powerhouses kima and the prohibit intense kima is very light so if you want to add some depth and pizzazz to it add prohibit perfume into i mean both are white florals they have predominantly white floral dna's mm, so good tuberose is the star here jasmine is the star here when they come together magic 
absolute magic. Try that if you have both of them. And the last one for today is... Hmm, now this one is very, very interesting. So I used my camera with Magnificent Pore Femme. My goodness, guys. Hmm. This smelled as if I created a new perfume entirely. Absolutely stunning, guys. Especially for a night out. Oh my God. So many compliments with this combo. I don't know why this perfume is not more popular than it is i totally loved this combination guys so yeah there you have it that is 10 over 10 middle eastern perfumes part two let me know if you have any of these perfumes and what other middle eastern perfumes you think are 10 over 10 for me i love this ones i can swear by them too so let me know what you think in the comments and till i talk to you on another video take care of yourselves bye guys